My name is Zach Groff. Almira. Priya Sahani. Look at the camera, Oliver. You're gonna be a movie star, Oliver. <laughs> Oliver is a dog we rescued from Yuling, China, and he was going to be eaten at the dog Yuling Dog Meat Festival. So he's a very lucky boy, but I'm a very lucky dad, too, to have him with me now. I'm completely unprepared. I have no idea what people say on YouTube. <laughs> My name is Wayne Shang. I'm an organizer with the Grassroots Animal Rights Network, Direct Action Everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna just read you some comments from your YouTube videos, is that cool? Sounds good. This is vegetableist extremism at its finest. <laughs> I've actually never heard that one before. I don't think I've ever heard of vegetableism, but I, I think I'm a fan. <laughs> That's cute. I like vegetables. <laughs> but I love animals too. Do people actually think that taking this approach in that context changes people's minds? You are almost guaranteed to reinforce not only their beliefs about animals, but their beliefs about vegans. I don't think people would be so afraid of us if this didn't change some minds and make people think. When you do a disruption or protest, the goal of the protest is not to change the minds of the people seeing the protest. The goal of the protest is to get the issue on the table. First world crybabies. Um, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> it's funny because I think in that demonstration, Anthony Bourdain was the one who was crying, so I'm not sure if they're attacking us or Anthony Bourdain. It really shows how ingrained human supremacy is when we think that the lives of billions of animals that are dying every single year are not important. This is another example of how DXE is damaging the movement. Keep telling yourself how awesome you are. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. <laughs> I question how effective this style of activism really is. Most people I've seen just walk past these protesters and ignore them because of how cringy and extreme they seem. Usually when I see something cringy and extreme, I don't just ignore it. Some people do that. A lot of people stop, a lot of people cry, a lot of people take a sign and, you know, never look back and join the animal rights movement. I was actually at that protest. We saw thousands of people stopping and staring, sometimes with their mouths wide open. This is the opposite of how people usually react to activists, right? If someone hands you a leaflet, solicits you on the street, you want to run away. But these protests captured the public imagination. I would have watched the theatrics while eating a lamb kebab. Oh wow, that's uh... <laughs> how do you respond to people like this? Yeah, that's really sad. I don't know what I can say to you if when you see someone caring about the suffering of animals and your response is to want to eat that poor animal's body. Only one chicken? Great job, losers. There actually may have been a few more. Being saved for that one chicken means the world to her. And seeing her step outside for the first time, be able to make friends for the first time, means the world to people who actually went inside and saved them. When you save one life, sometimes you change the world. And the stories we're telling with the Open Rescue Network don't just save the life of one individual animal, but they affect millions of people who see these videos on social media, in the New York Times, and the Washington Post, and in media outlets and television stations across the country and across the world. As long as I keep getting free samples at Costco, I'm good. I like free samples at Costco too, but as long as they don't come with suffering of animals inside. I usually try to grab one before the protest. I just can't bring myself to give a shit about these chickens. Well, I mean, people said the same about all sorts of other marginalized groups in the face of social movements. People still the same, say the same today about people of color, immigrants such as myself. But when good people of conscience actually hear the stories, and frankly, even when someone who's a heckler or a troll like that, when they actually have to face the reality of a suffering individual, whether it's an animal or a human being, they often change their tune. And that's what we're trying to do with these protests, these rescues, and this activism. You act like you saved a child from a concentration camp. I mean, it's just a chicken. We literally saved a child from a concentration camp. I think it's accurate. We did save a child. All animals that we kill and eat are killed as children. So yes, child. And some might say that it is a concentration camp. Well, what is the difference between a chicken and a puppy? Or frankly, even a human child? So for hundreds of years, for thousands of years, we said to animals, you're different from us, you're weaker than us, your, your feelings don't matter. We have to change that story. Get a life. We're all glad Pagan tackled your ass. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of glad he tackled me too, because frankly, he got millions more people exposed to the cause of animal rights. But, you know, it's a funny thing. People always say, get a life to activists, and in fact, Activists have the most purpose-driven lives that I know. It's fascinating how activism, and especially animal rights and vegan activism, somehow transform ordinary, seemingly rational adults into five-year-old children. I think the public sees us as fringe, over-emotional hippies. Someone who eats, like, grass and twigs. Drug users, people who hate human beings. Screaming at people and throwing fake blood on them. Eating vegetables and being healthy. And in fact, animal activists are normal people who have the same diversity, the same interests, 
the same families that everyone else has. We just happen to also care about animals. I, I think I defy the stereotype of, of an animal rights activist. I'm sort of a nerdy guy who's uh, very into science and social science. You know, I don't care a lot about my vegan identity. I don't, I don't really care if other people eat healthy. Though I don't like to throw fake blood on people unless it's all, all part of the plan and that person knows it's coming. I'm, I'm Chinese. I'm a former corporate lawyer in a movement that doesn't have a lot of folks who've worked for Fortune 500 companies, maybe to my great shame, frankly. Historically, I've been a pretty big geek. So in some ways I fit the stereotype and in other ways I don't. Join a growing movement for animal rights activism. Join a group called Direct Action Everywhere. We are taking non-violent direct action for animals but we're also building community of people who love each other and who care about animals and who want to see this world become a better place. And the way that you can do that is by coming to community events and offering whatever skills you have to help animals everywhere.